I'd like to welcome you all to the, the Cranky Geek WebRTC show for 2015. And it's the second one that we're doing here. And for me, that's like very interesting because after the first one, we didn't know what we we're going to do. We thought it was going to be a one-off. And now it's the second one. Um, so the first question I have, anyone here was part of the event that we did last year? OK, so we have some second timers here. Anyone here doesn't know what WebRTC is here and just came for the food? <laughs> OK, we've got a meal there just for the food. From those who do, are there people that are actually using it daily? OK, so that's going to be an easy crowd today. So I'd like to start by thanking our sponsors, especially Google and Twilio for making this happen, and also uh, Atlassian HipChat and IBM Bluemix. Cranky Geek is now three people. So there's Geek, which is me. There's Cranky, which is Chris, somewhere around here. You heard him more than once today. And we've had the uh, chat this year. We didn't give him a name yet inside that name of ours. But that, that's how it goes. We will have breaks today. The breaks are for certain things. One of them is for you to be able to network. So we've done that through lunchtime. We'll have more breaks during the day. We'll end up, I guess, somewhere between five to six, depending on how many additional problems we will have and how many questions you end up asking. So the speakers that we have today are varied and, well, quite a lot, especially if you look at what we've done last year, which we had a lot then as well. We've got Google, Microsoft, and Mozilla, so all the browser vendors are here. We have the, spon the other sponsors, Twilio, um, Ipchat, and, uh, Twilio, Atlassian, and IBM. And a few other speakers. Everything here is going to be very interesting, that I'm assuring you. And we're also going to have a lot of topics that are going to be covered today. So we tried to hear last year, those that have been there, we wanted more technical stuff. So we wanted to do more te technical stuff. We tried to cover a lot more details in a, a lot more areas. So we threw away a bit of the signaling part. We have that in. We've got some media stuff in, a little bit of mobile, DevOps, and a lot of other things. Now, one thing to say is that WebRTC is always, I always hear there is questions from people like, well, you know, is it ready yet? Can we start using it? And a few months ago, I started using this slide to show people that, yes, it's here. You know, it's not like startup companies playing with stupid technology. You've got some big names out there that have announced real products this year. So there's Facebook. Facebook Messenger today uses WebRTC. So if you go to messenger.com and you do a video call, that's a WebRTC call. If you use the app on mobile, it uses WebRTC. There is Skype. Doesn't use WebRTC yet. But they already said, Microsoft said that there's going to be Skype for web, and Microsoft Edge, their new browser, already supports Get User Media. So things are getting there in that front as well. Comcast launched a service, and that service provides, it's called Xfinity Share, and it allows people to share videos the same way they do with Chromecast, but through a set of box, the Xfinity set of box, the X1. And I think they, they just added the video chat service through that box. Um, AT&T launched an API platform, beta beginning of this year, general av availability, I think, from August last month. And then that last, you know, this small minor icon logo here. Anyone knows what company this one is? OK, yes, that's Cisco Spark. Cisco decided to take WebEx and the things that they are doing in unified communication and reboot, I'd say, reboot everything and try to do it differently. And that's Cisco Spark, so Cisco is there as well. There are a lot of other companies, big and small. It's just the five that I decided to put on that slide because a lot of things and announcements came out at the same time frame of three months. So I found that interesting. Now, when we talk about WebRTC, there are two sides to WebRTC. There's the web part of WebRTC and the voice over IP part of WebRTC. And it's some kind of a clash between two worlds. People that come with web development and these kinds of capabilities, interests, and mindset, and those that know what VoIP means. I'm a VoIP guy. I got the curriculum for how you do VoIP. There are certain things that you do when you do VoIP, and there are different things that you do when you do web. And WebRTC sits somewhere in the middle. 
So there are a lot of conversations and fights about how to use WebRTC and how not to use WebRTC. And for me, as someone coming from VoIP, well, you know, WebRTC is super easy. That's what I think about WebRTC. If you're going to do something that needs voice or video, that's the simplest way to do it today. I know I've been there. I've developed myself stuff in C and C++ and coded ugly things that need to work with, WebRT with voice over IP. Okay? Not easy. Now, you go and look at WebRTC, that's like, you know, crazy easy. No issues about it. And then there are other people that come into the room, and these are the web developers, and they look at all of these APIs and permissions and asynchronous stuff that needs to go on, and servers that need to be set up. And they say, well, that's too hard. Okay, so we might not be there yet, but you need to understand if you are a web developer that WebRTC is the easiest thing to get video calling and voice calling and video sessions and voice sessions today. Nothing beats that. And yes, you need to learn more and be more professional at what you are doing. But guess yeah, what? That's what you need to do anyway, because the web is becoming more complex as well. Now, before I leave and give the stage for our real speakers for the day, I want to show this analysis that I've done recently about Stack Overflow. I used their API. Stack Exchange has an API, and I checked for the last four years for questions that were tagged with the word <coughs> WebRTC on them, and counted the number of questions and answers per, per month. And this is about what you get. Okay, so the numbers aren't really that high, but they are growing, they are steadily growing. There's no hyper growth thing there or exponential growth or whatever. And if you ask me, that is, this is what's going to happen until the end of the year at least, and maybe even into up until the end of 2016. So what we are going to see is continued slow growth about everything that relates to WebRTC. Okay, so there is not going to be any exponential takeoff of whatever. But bear in mind at the same time that when someone small like Facebook decides to put it on Messenger, you've got 900 million people using it the next day. Okay? So although not a lot of people are actually working on it, it's probably the best place to be because if you are a developer and you know WebRTC, you're a talent that people would want to use. <laughs>